Hello nerds! Thank you for watching Generally Nerdy. This is the Week in Nerddom, your place for daily nerd news videos. Today being Monday, we're talking music. And this week in music, we've got a little Machine Gun Kelly for some reason, uh, Killswitch Engage, a new side project for Randy Blythe from Lamb of God, and then we're reviewing some new videos and songs. So. Before we can get into that, though, we have to get into the intro. Hello, Thank you for watching, Jiggly Nerdy. This is your weekend. So, first things first, uh, technically this is movie news, but it's a musician being cast in a movie as another musician, so I figured it fit a little better here in music. Uh, the autobiography but that Motley Crue, alright, it's, it's, a, it's, a it's a little, there's, there's little levels here. So the autobiography that Miley Crew put out uh, called The Dirt a few years back is getting made into a movie. We've talked about that in movie news before. Uh, Machine Gun Kelly has been cast as Tommy Lee for the movie, which is <laughs> is kind of indicative on a number of levels, uh, not the least of which being their casting choices are brilliant because he's such a good actor. I mean, if you watched Bird Box, then you know kind of what I'm talking about. Um, yeah. So that's the thing that's happening, and we're not going to dwell on it, so we're moving on next to Killswitch Engage. And actually, this is this is a bit of a somber uh, news piece, because uh, Jesse Leach, we talked a couple weeks ago, splitting up with his wife, uh, they're going for a divorce, and he just took to his Instagram account over the weekend talking about how he's not going to be uh, he's not gonna become a, a statistic to suicide or something. I'm paraphrasing here. Uh, just kind of, I mean, he had vocal surgery uh, in about middle of last year because he blew out his voice. Um, a lot of stress going on in his life these days. And uh, the reason he left Killswitch to begin with is because he was having mental issues, I believe is how he put it. Uh, so there's already a, a baseline of, of mental illness, so it's just, it's concerning, but it's good that he is actively in treatment now. Uh, he said Friday that he was going to be starting tomorrow, so Saturday, and it being now Sunday as I'm recording this, uh, that's that, it's a step in the right direction. I mean, we can't... It would really, really suck. I, I mean, I, I'm not going to say we can't, because anything is possible. It would really, really suck to lose another great vocalist to something horrible like that. So, thoughts and prayers, Jesse, whatever that means at this point. I know it's uh, a little trite these days, but still, the the sentiment is there. Um, but yeah, next on the list, moving on, kind of bringing it up before we move into reviews... Uh, we have a new project for from Randy Blythe. Uh, then it's, I, I we haven't heard anything from it yet. But I'm gonna I'm gonna read some names off to you real quick. And these are these are the people who are be, who are involved with this band. The name of the band is Over It All, and so it's obviously Randy Blythe on vocals. Uh, one of the guitar players from Animals as Leaders, Javier Reyes. Uh, so not Tosin Abasi. Which would be really interesting now that I think about it. Tosin on guitar and Randy on vocals. Yeah, that's, yeah, sure. Uh, the other guitar is going to be helmed by Lorenzo and Antonucci, who was in Sworn Enemy, which I didn't realize they were still a band. Maybe they're not. Maybe that's why he can afford to do over it all, is because Sworn Enemy isn't really making music these days. I don't know. I haven't listened to Sworn Enemy for years, they haven't really been on my radar for a while. Uh, and then the other two members of the band are not 
known as known to be musicians. That's not to say that they're not musicians, but one of them, uh, JJ Cassiere, I am really butchering that name. He is a 33 and West booking agency co-founder. And then Baron Rodnar is uh, Media Scare Records head. So a record label executive and a booking agent round out the band. It doesn't say what they are going to be playing, though obviously one of them is going to be the drummer and the other one is going to be the bass player. So they are the rhythm section, which again is kind of interesting being as they're not traditionally known to be musicians. So uh, they're signed to Sumerian Records. They are already apparently on tour because if you follow Randy... And now there's an Instagram page for over it all. Uh, they, they've been posting pictures. They posted a picture, at least, on a, a an RV that they're touring on, it seems. Uh, they haven't said explicitly that they're on tour, but why else would you need to rent an RV? Uh, just a whole lot of weird going on here. And, and they're signed to Sumerian Records, like I said, so they're going to be insanely heavy. Uh, which shouldn't really be much of a surprise considering the people involved. So I I really, I really, really want this music to be here already just because I, I have no idea where to begin. Lamb of God, New, new Age of American Heavy Metal, uh, Animals as Leaders, as you could qualify them as gent if you were so inclined. They're really just uh, progressive... Yeah... <laughs> Aggressive progressive, I guess you could uh, math metal even sometimes. It's a lot of words. They're they're really good. <laughs> they're very heavy and instrumental, so also very interesting. Uh, and then Sworn Enemy is like New York hardcore, very different worlds of the heavy music genre coming together for this. So I again chomping at the bit for this. But that's where the news ends this week, guys. Now we're going to move into reviews. Before we do the reviews, though, guys, I'm going to remind you that there is a Patreon account. Patreon.com slash Gently Nerdy is the place that you can go support the channel. There are there's quite a few levels these days, and at the lowest level, just a dollar a month, I do a monthly Discord, and we go over the, the previews for next... Or <clears throat> just at the lowest level... For just a dollar a month, which is the lowest level, you get early access, you get a monthly Discord, uh, so much stuff, even just for that one dollar. Go check it out again, patreon.com slash generally nerdy. Uh, there's, you get a lot more stuff the higher up you go on the patron scale, uh, all the way up to $50, and, and you get credited as a producer in every video. So again, patreon.com slash generally nerdy. And now let's review some stuff. First thing this week in reviews is comes to us from a band called Wage War. The name of the song is Low. Link to the video is in the description. And this for this review, we're going to do a little bit of a hybrid style because in music, we'll do an album or a song or a music video. This one's going to be both for the song and the video because this is a band I've never heard before. And I just, it was suggested to me through YouTube suggestions. So we're going to talk about it. I, it was, I was intrigued by the thumbnail, which if you don't know how the YouTube algorithm goes, that's a whole other video. But again, the name of the song is Low and the name of the band is Wage War. Uh, this is, this is a band who I feel like is, is doing a decent job of blending two subgenres of metal. Uh, there are definite parts in here where it feels new wave of American heavy metal, uh, almost genty. Again, I really hate using that subgenre specifically. Uh, but then they're also very much a metalcore band because they have those soaring sections, those melodic. Uh, <laughs> if if you listen to the Metal by Numbers song by Brian Posehn, the gay part, uh, 
it's and and the song is very strong very very strong when they're doing what seems like their forte which is the heavy crushing bits because those bits are are very well orchestrated uh production on those everything is nice and crisp and clear and then the two passages the two sections of the song where it is that melodic soaring vocal sound less polished sound less uh rehearsed even almost like it just the, the I, it might just be the switch of the vocalist. I the 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 guitar player who does those melodic vocals versus their uh, lead singer who does the the growl scream vocals. Um, just it's a lot of bands do that juxtaposition. A lot of bands actually that exact same dynamic. A lot of bands do that, and there are quite a few bands out there. Uh, oh sleeper comes to mind that do it 10 times better than these guys but it seems again there's only the two sections it seems like they're playing more to their strengths than they are to their weaknesses because they limit the sections uh, to a smaller portion of the song and actually you don't get the first soaring section they don't get the first melodic section until about halfway through the song. So they establish the ground on which they want to be, and then they do the part that's going to get the girls to the show. Uh, so a, a pretty solid entrance. Uh, I, I haven't researched the band much just yet. I just was focused on this song and this video. So let's talk a little bit about the video before we get into the scores. Uh, the video is a pretty standard performance video but it's it's kind of kicked that up a notch which i really really appreciated uh the the aesthetic is each band member is performing inside of a box you have the obligatory uh close-ups on the vocalist as they sing um but that so inside this white box it's not just like a little white room it's a wall with a uh, box cut out in which the they're performing so they have some really cool camera work that some of it looks like it's done actually with a physical camera though there are a few of those shots that are painfully obvious that they are done software wise though they aren't done bad i say painfully obvious because if you didn't realize they did that on the computer then you're not paying attention but <laughs> uh it it i feel like this is a really cool way to do a performance video because Everybody does the video where you're on stage. It's a super simple video to shoot. Uh, the one drawback to doing a performance video, though, is it lays out the song bare. The song has to stand on its own because there's not an interest. There's not a a, a separate visual element. The 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 performance is it is what it is. It's not there, there's not a whole lot of fanciness that you can get away with when you're doing a performance video. Uh, so, that being said, let's get into those scores. <clears throat> general score for this uh, video slash song. I, so, the general, I feel like I wasn't s specific enough. I, I didn't separate general from enjoyability. General is the more technical side of things. Uh, whatever, because we're also doing the quality of the video and then how it exists in the genre kind of comparison there. Uh, but other times when we're talking about like song structure and stuff like that, that's what goes in the general. When we're talking about uh, when uh, performance is one when we're doing individual songs, uh, how well is the song played? That won't be in the general score, obviously, because it's got its own score. But enjoyability is more subjective. General is objective, enjoyability is subjective. So, general score for this song video is an 80. It was... there wasn't anything horrible about it. Again, they do have those two sections with, the, with those melodic soaring vocals that... I, I personally could have done without, but that's not to say that they were not executed well, just not as well as the other stuff that they obviously enjoy playing more. So that's kind of what brought it down. Now, so that's an 80. Next, we're going to talk about the quality of the music video. And again, considering it's just a performance video, it does exactly what it needs to do. 
but a performance video will never get a perfect score out of me, ever. And unless it's something so mind-blowing that it borderlines on con conceptual video, there's there's never gonna be a hundred for a performance video, I can tell you right now. So, uh, that being said, music video quality is an 80 out of 100. Again, they do some really interesting things with the camera, but there's only so much interesting you can do and still qualify as a performance video. So again, 80 out of 100 for the video quality. Next is genre. Uh, and so this is how it how it compares to other bands in the genre. So I, I'm qualifying this as a metalcore. Uh, even though it does borderline, they, they do stretch out into other subgenres, primarily because of the, the broad strokes in which they are painting. Uh, this is, for all intents and purposes, a metalcore song, metalcore band even. So inside that genre, there is a lot of stiff competition. I mean, you have to, you really have to have to do something different. And while they are doing things well, it's not exactly something very different. So score in the genre category, you're looking at about a 70 out of 100. This... That's not as bad as it might sound, but I would imagine these guys, and again, I haven't done a whole lot of research into the band, just going strictly off of this one song and video. I would imagine these guys maybe have an album or two out. Uh, so this might be off of their second record. The first one was maybe something they put out themselves or on an indie label, something like that. And they just need a little bit of time to grow. It's not to say again that they did that they're a bad band or that this is a bad song. It's just it's it's fallen just above the middle of the pack. That's all. I mean, when you've got bands like Unearth and Killswitch Engage in your genre, or they betray you even, it's difficult to shine because those guys are taking up all the spotlight. <laughs> Which then brings us to the subjective end of the scale, which is the enjoyability rating. And once again, I dig this song. I dig, I, if these guys are on a bill, I'm definitely going to show up early so that I can catch their set before the headliners. Because they're not quite headliner material yet, but they're still super enjoyable. Uh, that being said, we're going 75 out of 100, which is a really respectable score. Your total... It is is a lot better than a lot of other generic metalcore bands. I it, it these guys definitely look like they're going somewhere important with their sound, and and I dig it. I totally can get behind this song. Next on the reviews list, we're talking about August Burns Red. They just put out uh, their cover of the Ocarina of Time theme with. Dustin Davidson. Now, I'm not familiar with Dustin Davidson. He does have a YouTube channel. I did not have time to check it out before, but based solely off of his performance on this song, he's definitely somebody to, to look out for. So, link to the video is down in the description. We are going... This is just the song, right? Yeah. This is not a, a review for the video, though. This is the review just for the song, and... I, it's difficult for me to not enjoy August Burns Red. Like, when I when they first became big, I really didn't want to like them because it was so freaking trendy to like them. All of the scene kids loved August Burns Red. So naturally, I didn't want to. But after listening to them for quite a while at this point, they it's difficult for them to do something that's not good. Uh... Their instrumental stuff, they put out that Christmas record last, uh, just a couple months ago. I believe it came out in November. Uh, that was instrumental, just like this song is instrumental, and it's it's their personal arrangements. And, and I say arrangements instead of structure, because when it comes to, especially the instrumental versions of August Burns Red, it's, it's definitely more of an arrangement. There's definitely passages rather than... Uh, portion that like it, it just has a different feel to it which is saying something in this genre again we're we're sticking in into the metalcore genre because apparently that's where most of my taste lies uh at least these days right now i don't know i, I i'm getting into other stuff too but for the sake of this uh 
I did this was the the addition of the third guitar. Let's start there because th- that theme song, there is that harmony that plays throughout even just the digital version on the Nintendo 64. That's that's what makes it one that's one of the iconic bits about that very iconic song. And so the addition of that third guitar lets them not o- lets them do those harmonies and still have that crushing rhythm guitar behind it. So just, just great. This is, and then the, uh, the video, even though we're not rating the video, the video is also pretty entertaining. Their cosplay as Link, it's great. Again, the link to the video is down in the description so you can go listen to it and watch the goofy little video that they made for it. But just, that's that doesn't detract even as silly as the video is it it can't detract from the really cool song that they the really cool arrangement rather that they did with this song so enough gushing let's move into the scores general score for this uh technicality uh, the the mix the arrangement all of that is pretty spot on uh the addition of there's 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 a passage towards the back end of the song about two-thirds of the way through i don't remember that passage from the original uh it's not to say that it's not there but it it seemed a little slightly out of place that's why this is not getting a perfect score so general score for the song we're looking at 95 out of 100 obviously didn't feel that out of place so 95 out of 100 general score genre uh, these guys are totally flag bearers for the genre uh, technical metalcore uh, however you want to tech hardcore i don't even know <laughs> um they're it, it, metalcore that, that's what they are and there are few bands who shine that light this bright. So 95 out of 100, even as freaking, it might seem out of place because it's a video game cover, but it totally feels just right inside their catalog. It's absolutely brilliant. So 95 out of 100 for the genre score. Writing, uh... I, I I might have gushed a little bit too much in the writing score just because I, I it's it's great <laughs> it feels so natural we're going a hundred out of a hundred for the writing score and then the enjoyability score if you haven't guessed this is this is getting right up there for the enjoyability we're going a hundred out of a hundred that's uh, 390 total that's one of the highest scores I'm ever going to give anything. I just, it must have just caught me in a really good mood because it was brilliant. I, I really dig it. And you should too. And then our last review for this week, guys, is Born of Osiris, uh, Cycles of Tragedy. Link in the description to the video. Uh, this is a video review. We are not reviewing the song this time. So the video is another performance video. They did kick it up a bit because it is just a performance video. There are interesting things. Uh, They did, I read an interview, really, really brief snippet from an interview about the video where the new record they wanted, which just went on sale, uh, the name of the record is Simulation, and they have like a character thing, creature, on the cover of the record, and they wanted to incorporate that into the video, so it's not a 100% performance video, but those elements of the video that deal with that character that they've created are more distracting than anything. They're, it's a little too out there, I guess. They're, they're trying to be too artsy and it just wasn't coming off well. So, uh, And this isn't one of the better songs that they've ever put out. So that kind of hurt it too. Uh, just... Aside from that, though, it is they were playing with the with the kaleidoscope kind of effects, and while they do it well, they're not breaking new ground there. So this is a real quick one. Let's get into the scores. 
general score for the video, I gave it a 70 out of 100. Again, I'm not going to turn, I'm not going to uh, click away on the YouTubes or change the channel or turn off the radio, but it's not, again, not one of my favorites. Then we're talking video quality. Uh, like I said before, they're, they're doing the kaleidoscope thing, which a billion other bands have done. Many of them have not done it as well, though uh, quite a few of them have done it better. So top of the middle, we're going 70 for this one as well. Song enhancement, this is the one that really hurt it. This does not enhance the song. This actually, in some cases, detracts from the song. Like I said, their, their inclusion of that character just wasn't executed very well. So we're going 50 out of 100 here. And then enjoyability. I like Born of Osiris. Uh, this is a totally subjective rating because that's the point of the enjoyability rating. Uh, again, this isn't exactly one of my favorite songs of theirs. Uh, I'm interest It does have me interested though to see what their new guitar player is going to do now that Jason Richardson isn't in the band anymore, though he hasn't been for a little while either way. Uh, new guitar player for this record. He, this is the first time he's actually written with the band, so I'm interested based off of this to see what happens next. Uh, and the video again is, is kind of cool. So 80 out of 100 for enjoyability. And that guys is where this week's update ends. What did I miss? What should we talk about next week? What should I review next time? Let me know in the comments down low. If though you want to go deeper into the conversation, jump over to the website, generallynerdy.net. That is the place that you can find all of the social medias. I've been putting new gear up in the stores, the general store tab across the top there. Uh, check that out. There's all kinds of stuff going on. You've actually seen some of the stuff flying across the bottom of the screen at this point. So check out generallynerdy.net. Uh, social medias, again, all of that starts from there. If this is your first time at Generally Nerdy, then please subscribe or follow depending on which platform you are watching. If you like this episode, then click the like button. If you're falling behind in your nerd news and you're, you happen to be watching on YouTube, then you can click or tap the box right there to the left of my face to catch up. But before we go and do all of the things and buy all of the shirts and do the stuff, guys, always, always remember that if it's generally nerdy, it's probably here.